boxing is a is a is a beautiful sport. It's an art. It's a science. But I also understood that it's a business. And I'd often say I want to put Leeds on the map. Just want to try to put Leeds on the map in some way, shape, or form in terms of boxing. As a, even an eighteen year old, I'm fucking shy. You know, trying to sell yourself to, you know, a thirty, forty year old man. They were following my dream. <laughs> This is the George Groves Boxing Club. I'm George Groves. I'm with Deck, and today we are with two-time world champion Josh Warrington. Woo! Happy New Year, Josh! Thanks for coming on the club, mate. Thanks for joining the show. No worries, no worries. Starting uh, starting off the year with a bang. Yeah. Big guest straight away, so <laughs> that was the thinking. Pleasure and honour to be here. We've been chasing you, Josh, for so long, and uh, your manager James will attest. I reckon I've been messaging him maybe once a fortnight. Yeah. For the last eighteen months, saying. Josh around, Josh around, yeah, yeah, and you've yeah. come all the way down from Leeds. Uh, all the way, all the way from Leeds. All the way from Leeds. So <laughs> thanks for thanks for coming, mate. Nice. Um, and we're doing a proper themed episode today, aren't we? Yeah, we are. We're going to talk about the art of building a fan base because few have done it recently. Yeah. But I think you might be top of the tree, Josh, in mm. terms of uh, your loyal following uh, that you've accumulated throughout your career, which is magical. Yeah. So we want to get into how you did it, what it's like. How you maintain it? Look, the idea of a fans episode, we've had it from the start of this pod and we were like, Josh Warrington's the person for that. Um, we want to wheel it all the way back. So have you always had a following? Like, have you always had a small following? Like, did you always have a few people coming? Or even from the start, were you working on that? Not really, not really. Um, I mean, if you rewind back to my amateur career, I boxed in all the gyms in Leeds. I, I, my dad liked me to get experience, so uh -huh. every time we got settled and started to know everybody in that gym, we'd move on to a different gym. Um, but I never, even though I boxed in all these different clubs in Leeds, I never got to fight on the home shows. So I never boxed as an amateur in Leeds. And obviously, in your, when you're in high school and stuff like that, and people saying, oh, when you fight in Leeds, we'll come watch you. But they don't want to be travelling down to Sheffield or Barnsley or wherever, you know, even as close as Wakefield. They can't travel down there without the mum and dad going, you know? So, um, although... In my last year, well, I say when I was in, I was 16, 17, I was in sixth form. I, I was training out of Barnsley, a gym down in Barnsley, and um, their local show, a home show, was a was a working men's club called the Birdwell. And I remember taking like 20, 20 30 people, and as an amateur, that's a lot of people, mm. to, especially How old from were Leeds. You? I was 16, yeah. 17. But yeah, um, it wasn't really like madly popular or like that. I remember um, when I had my pro debut at Huddersfield Leisure Centre. It was on Halloween, 2009. <laughs> and uh, and I was I like, fucking hell, all my mates are the 17, 18. They, they can't afford a fucking ticket. And even if it were only 30 quid, you know, for a general admission and 50 quid for ringside, they can't afford that. Do you know what I mean? Like they're asking them, they're tapping the mum and dad up for 10, 20 quid mm. yeah. to go out on a night out. Like fucking, it's not just a boxing ticket, is it? It's, you know, you want a few drinks whilst you're there, you want to get an hour outfit. Yeah, it was, it was hard in the early days, real hard. And uh, I understood that boxing is a, is, a, is a beautiful sport, it's an art, it's a science, but I also understood that it's a business. And without having too many amateur credentials to come or shine off of, you know, one getting offered big TV contracts straight away, didn't have loads of sponsors. So I didn't have any sponsors until my fucking 10 fight. So like, like, I need to get I need to get a following, but how do you do that? Mm. Um, so what I do is just, you know, you, the fights would go by. At the time, Facebook were starting to take off. People still had like Bebo's and MySpaces. Yep. Um, but I never had any of them. But um, so you wasn't on Bebo or MySpace. No, not like not like that, not like that. I I, bloated, I had MSN. Yeah, classic. That's, so was you punting tickets yeah, on yeah, MSN? Yeah. <laughs> but I'd have I'd have a little book. I'd have my phone and then I'd put like little, you know, change my status on fucking MSN so <laughs> the next fight is on this day. Yep, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, that, and that was, and that was old it. Old school. That was it, that was it. Um, I analysed it and thought, right, my circle of, of friends are all my age. And like I say, a lot of them were going off to uni. A lot of them were going off to sixth form. And th all they want to do is get pissed, get pissed and study. And uh, most students can, you know, Belly stand on two feet, never mind, you know, pay for tickets for nights out like that. So I had to, you know, sell it, not to them, but I had to sell it to other people, you know, to build a follow following outside of that bracket. Now, 
I've always been a, a Leeds United fan. I've always been proud of Leeds, the city. You know, I'm a Rhinos fan, but not as much as I love Leeds United. You know, I've always been a big Leeds, Leeds fan. Um, and I've always been jealous of the fact of Leeds as such a size of city doesn't have big boxing. No one really speaks about Leeds as being a professional boxing city. Whereas you do, with cities up north, you've got Manchester, you've got so many champions from Manchester, Liverpool, you've got so much history from Liverpool. But Leeds, not really. And I'd often say, I want to put Leeds on the map. Just want to try to put Leeds on the map in some way, shape or form in terms of boxing. Whether it be another British champion to come from Leeds, to add alongside Henry Wharton, Crawford Ashley, Carl Johansson, um, Derek Roach, you know, to stand alongside them. Um, if you can do it, you know, one further and go European or maybe world, then fucking I'll be wanking. But um, but you, obviously they're, they're fairy tales, aren't they? Mm. The fairy tales. So what I do is um, I just listen to anyone, anyone's dad, anyone's uncle, or ever just mentioned a story about boxing or had a little bit with boxing, whether it be they went to gym once as themselves or they've been to a Nigel Benn fight or a Chris Eubank fight or a Steve Collins fight or whatever. And I'm like, right, let me go speak to him. You know, and as a, as a, as a, even an 18 year old, I'm fucking shy. You yeah. know, going up in, you know, trying to sell yourself to, you know, a 30, 40 year old man. You know, what the fuck do you, well, you, you're the box look at Stasi, mate. You know, I can go gust the wind and blow you over. But I just, you know, sell it there. Listen, I'm, I'm a Leeds lad. I love Leeds. I just want to try to put Leeds on the map and um, try to make it as personal as, as, I, as I could. And what I have done over the years, I've gained a lot of um, friends, like close friends from the boxing. Who, you know, I've only met through boxing and of them coming to follow me. And uh, it's just, you know, a case of, you know, come support me, you know. And it only took one person to come. And if they go away and they've enjoyed the experience, then they mentioned it to their circle and it just spreads like that. You had a good following as an amateur, didn't you? you yeah, about yeah. Your call. yeah, yeah. So we sold, sold a lot of tickets at the ABA final and then... You know, I was lucky my first fight was on a David Hay undercard. So it was quite interesting for people to come because mm. it wasn't just supporting me. Oh, they can also, they've heard of David Hay. He was like the cruiserweight world champion, just moved up to heavyweight. So I had that benefit. But then the next fight, I'm on an on-TV show at your call. Yeah. So I'm like, right, okay, right. I've got to shift a load of tickets here, otherwise I don't get paid. Um, and yeah, you're sending messages out to guys you haven't you haven't seen for three years since you left school. <laughs> uh, but loads of them are quite interested that, you know, you don't come across professional boxers within your own life that often. So like, oh, we'll give that a punt. And then you've got to, uh, you've got to deliver, haven't you? You've got yeah. to put on a show. You've got, to, you've got to be good, entertaining, try and retain them. And then some people, you, as you say, you meet maybe just through boxing who are probably a boxing fan before they even knew you. But then they want to jump on your journey. They like to say, oh, I've been there since the start. Mm. But it's quite hard, yeah? Well, mate, it's hard. It's, Cause it's, it's so hard at the start. People, do people think you've just always had, yeah. yeah, and you've had a gift of, oh, he's from Leeds. He's Leeds they just yeah, follow yeah, him yeah, because yeah. he's from Leeds. Yeah. And it's like, I mean, I've, 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 I've seen him with other fo like, football fans, mm. shall we say, yeah. you know, jump on a club and expects the fan base to just automatically come up there. Yeah. Like, that, that didn't happen with me. I like, I spotted Leeds and I've, you know, been fortunate since um, you know, to be associated with Leeds United and have them, you know, go on the pitch and stuff like that. Same with Leeds Rhinos, but it wasn't like, oh, I'm a Leeds fan, come fucking follow me, you know. Yeah. It was like, but I'm proud of City. That, that, that's it. But, mate, sometimes we're well, fucking very hard. I mean, it gets to like just before Christmas. People are on the works dues, you know, people are spending money on Christmas presents. <sighs> Can't make this one this time, Josh. Yeah. You know, you'd write a list. So I'd have, I'd have, a, black, I, I'd have a black book. Right, I know who would who would normally go to like big big followers, big supporters, and um, you know I'd, I'd write the names down and think, give them a call, send a text about got a fight coming up. Um, I know you've been to one or two before. Enjoyed it last time, you know. Uh, this is where it is, blah blah. Um, tickets this much, tickets that much. This is I'm going to be fighting, going to be stepping up soon, you know. Hopefully, hey, some bigger news. Yep. Sometimes texts will come through. Josh can't make this one, pal. I've got a few things on. No problem. Send a text back. But then the text back, ah, oh, mate, two have dropped out. Fucking <laughs> hell. <laughs> Only three. But then you'd go along, drive up to his house, and I'd, I'd always go into whoever it was. I'd never make them come to me. I'd always go to their house, you know, go inside. Um, you know, if they're putting kettle off of your drink, yeah, sit down, have a chat with them. They'd ask about training. I'd tell them stories about sparring, stories about um, 
the excitement, the venue, who's, who's on headlines, obviously, at that moment in time, I was just uh, on, on the card. Um, we talk about the main event. I'd, I'd get... I'd make myself knowledgeable to know what who's who's fighting on the main event and who you know why that's going to be a test. I tried to sell that, like not sell it, but explain what they're going to what they're purchasing. You know, yeah. you're just coming to see me for six rounds and eighteen minutes. You come to see this and these as well. I also look out for this fellow on the card. He's decent. Watch him as well. You know, you want to stick around and watch him. He's really good. He's a bit of a knockout eye. You want to watch him. And then you know, a lot of time the the lads would, would say, what, "What do you want to do?" Oh, do you know what? I just want to fucking get a British title. Get that Lord Lonsdale belt. Fucking, I'm with you, Josh. I'm with you. Listen, when you get that fucking Lord British title, you're going to have to bring it round and we'll, we'll get a few pictures. Listen, we will do, but we're doing it together. And I feel like that. I walk away, like, absolutely pumped, thinking, there's no way I can fucking lose it. And even if I'm fighting a journeyman who's had 85 losses, I'd be thinking, Carlos, come beat me because I'm fucking... Steve's behind me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Steve and Alan are behind me. Mm. You know what I mean? And they're bringing up fucking boys from Oak, Royal Oak. You know, I can't let them down. Yeah. So like, I'd have, I I take that energy into into gym. Um, I also worked with a, a couple of um, older lads in in a dental in a dental lab when I'm doing when I was working as a dental technician, and they helped me as well. They helped me like get a Facebook page set up and stuff like that. But yeah, there were times when you thought you're getting somewhere and you were starting to build and you saw like 50 or 60 tickets and I started speaking to local coach companies and like getting a good relationship with them. Oh, Josh, it's you again. Where are you this time, love? Oh, over in Bolton, right? No worries, I'll get your price through soon. And I tried to, you know, never making the money on it, just making sure that we covered the cost of the coach for, you know, people so to get over and back. Yeah, we do, people, yeah, yeah, basically in a way, day, but even still, it wasn't good enough. I mean, I remember I was fighting in um, the Bolton football ground and Scott Quigg were fighting Jason Booth on the main, uh, main, main event. It was a Sky show. And... Um, I remember I'm doing like 48 tickets and I'm meant to do 55. And my manager, Steve Wood, comes over and says, Frank's not going to be happy. Frank Maloney, who promoting it, he went, Frank's not going to be happy, Josh. I went, Steve, fucking seven tickets short. So like, someone pulled out literally this morning, like, I had to give him the money back. He went, you might not get paid tonight. I'm like, fucking hell. You know, you, you're there getting ready for a, for yeah. a fight. We're only, we're only six frees, but I'm thinking, I can hell, you've, you've gone through all that stress. You know, putting the text about delivering tickets here, there, and everywhere. Your purse is probably gonna reimburse because I was like having to lend me money off my me, me, me girlfriend or now my wife at the time, and like borrow ten off my dad, so I'm gonna have to reimburse all them people. And like, I'm probably gonna have a couple hundred quid after that, you know, in my back pocket. But that's probably gonna go to one side because I need my medicals to pay for, you know, next bloody month. So yeah, mate, they them them times were hard, and they yeah. don't always had that big fucking fan base that mm. like everyone sees now because yeah. people think you people think you did oh man that's fascinating uh, when i when i first start, when i first started coming through on the sky shows because it happened so quickly mm. like where it really started to take off was 2012 so i was getting ready to fight to fight for one of them british masters remember them the British, yeah. the yep. fucking british masters yeah. style fighting uh i was meant to schedule i was scheduled to fight michael van blaster yeah, fucking yeah. throw back. I think he's still going. Yeah, he's still going. And uh, we went to fight him in, in Hull, and um, I was sparring, and I twisted my pelvis basically. I had to a muscle around here, so I had to pull out. Yeah. Got back into training, and then we're driving home from training. Me and my old man, and um, Steve Wood rings my dad and says, "Right, we've got um, we've got an opportunity if Josh wants it." Dad puts it on fucking speaker. Go on, Steve, say it again. <laughs> yeah, we've got an opportunity. It's uh, Darren Dudley. Um, English title against the lad unbeaten there. Um, I'm not too sure if he wants to take it now. My old fella's looking at me. Steve doesn't realise I'm on speaking. Yep, yep, he'll have it, he'll have it. Yeah, 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 he'll have it, he'll have it. Well, you're going to ask him, Sean. No, he'll have it, he'll definitely have it, he'll have it. I'm like thinking, fucking hell, five weeks time in someone else's backyard. But at that time, I'd, I'd been pro for three years and it would get to the stage where people are like, oh, who are you fighting this time, mm. Josh? Who are you fighting this time? Who are you fighting this time? So they wanted... Some excitement. Yeah. So, yeah. takes one out. First title, lads. Away day. Ten rounder against an unbeaten kid. So, that were that would have decent sell. I've, I've sold about 80, 90 tickets. Which, like... That felt like the start of the... That was the start, yeah. Start like, curve. Two fights prior, I boxed in Manchester Bowlers and I sold four. Wow. Do you know what I mean? And so, no one will believe... No. ...that 
<laughs> Josh Warren can only sell four, four tickets, tickets for man, a they can win one car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one car. Did you drive? Yeah. Well, six, uh, six including my dad and my, and my missus, but obviously... They didn't buy a ticket. And my, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my dad's in my corner, so... Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. That's uh, we, staggering. We had, we had 80 tickets down on Dudley after that fight, because it was like 80 in the fucking corner. The, f- the fight was a bit of a barnstorm. We just like two lads unbeaten, just going toe to toe. I picked up the win, picked up my, my first title, and the video started to circulate around. Fucking hell! Here, yeah, this was class. Here, yeah, we took over it. Little venue, we were fucking eighty leagues. Lot took over it. Singing, shouting, Josh Battick kid. <laughs> fucking class. He came on coach after because I went on coach, give a bit of speech. Thank you all for coming. Everyone got pissed up. Then I had lived different little stories like, oh yeah, we went into Tesco's on the service and way back up, robbed a fucking couple of crates. So it was like fair folk tale stories, mm. you know. Probably not things that you advocate, but you know, amongst them lads from the state, they fucking something to talk about right up until Christmas. So, um, yeah, it were it really started to take off, and that's when I noticed because we came back to Leeds, and I'd um, I'd fight in the Leeds Town Hall. Now I'd watch like Kyle Johansson fight there against Ricky Burns for the for the British side. I was like fucking hell, Leeds Town Hall, this is unbelievable. And um, I went from selling eighty tickets there to I think four or five hundred tickets. Oh, yeah, at the, the Leeds Town Hall. You know, the the, the local press started getting involved. Um, as luck would have it, uh, luck would have it, but four or five weeks before that fight, we've got some posters. I'm I'm at uni at this point. I'm studying for dance technology. I'm doing fucking devilish uni, so I need to get some posters printed up. Steve's printed me some, but the fucking dog shy. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, one of my pals has got like a bit of an idea of how to design shit. So I've told him like fucking English flagging background, right? Fucking yeah. um, this and other. Now we've got these posters printed up. And uh, got them, I've, I've printed them off at uni. It fucking cost me about 30 quid for like print like fucking 40 process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. skinning me out, man. And um, I've got them on me, just been back seat in my, in my car just in case any any opportunity. Get speaking on here, you know. So um, I've got these posters and me and one of me, me and my pals going down to one of the Leeds games and this were when we were doing shy, we were down in, I think we were playing all, might have been league one or championship. We watched Leeds get beat fucking three two, fucking <laughs> dog shite. On way home, pulled into um, one of the garages, get some, uh, get like fucking, he gives a five for some fuel, put five of the diesel in. Next minute, car pulls up, it's one of at the, the moment, that moment in time, hot shots Ross McCormack, Leeds United striker. So we're like, fucking hell, it's Ross McCormack, fucking hell. Yeah, we'll get him an the picture. You ask him, no, you ask him, fuck it, rock, paper, scissors, who asks him? <laughs> Bastard, I'll have to ask him, then. You, you are fucking fighting, aren't you? So get out. <laughs> Ross, do you mind if we have a picture? Big Leeds fans are like, yeah, yeah, Sal, mate, no worries, no worries, just fill this up. Fill in his fucking big range, it's been like fucking five minutes filling it up. <laughs> Fills it up and goes, yeah, I said, Ross, do you mind if I get this picture in? Oh, you boxer? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, fucking nice one. He starts talking about boxing, he's a bit of a boxing fan himself. Knows people up Scotland boxing. Oh, nice one, yeah. Have you ever spoken to a club about getting involved? Like that? No, no, I'll pass you some details, give you your number, blah, blah. Oh, and as luck would have it there, week or so later they got in contact oh. and and then after that I'm on, I'm on pitch I'm on pitch you know came celebrating you know showing up in world title and like promoting the next fight so yeah. things just started to happen really quickly in, in, in that stage and so you never look past an opportunity yeah and you haven't stopped with the with the grind do you, do you know what I mean what, what you have what, to do what, what did have it to feel do? like uh, are you still so now you've moved up to say 500 tickets a show yeah are you still having to do the the hand delivery yourself and maybe even come in for a cup of tea I'm, and a chat. I'm still doing it, mate. I'm, I, still doing I still, all still that. do it to this day. Yeah. I still do it to this day. I still do, obviously not as much running about, but I still do it to this day. I have, I have like a, some lads who've been there from day dot and I'll be forever indebted because I know they've missed weddings. They've missed family birthdays just to be at my fights, mm. you know, and times when we're fighting for fuck all, you know, there were no titles online, but they'd be there because yeah. They were following my dream. At one stage of my life, it were, I ready to pack it all in. So like, I couldn't do it. It was hard trying to sell tickets, train, work, study. I couldn't do it all. Like fucking, I was 22 as well. Like trying to have a relationship with me, with my missus, trying to be just a normal lad. I mean, I didn't have the fucking going out Friday, Saturday, Sunday, like most 18 year old lads do. I know a lot of boxers do it anyway, but I feel like I'm missing out. That that association with the football club, like when you spoke to Ross McCormack and then you got on the pitch and whatnot. Yeah. 
how pivotal was that? Because if you think like the biggest ticket sellers we've had in Britain, you, Ricky Hatton, mm. CBS now, you could say, Nathan Heaney, yeah. Stoke, proper football fan, not not the sort of associate with a club, but the people who've actually gone yeah, as yeah. kids and whatever. Yeah, yeah. At that point, how, how important was that for the following? Going on the pitch and, and that association with Leeds United? Well, I'd not, I didn't know some, a big difference straight away. Um, I, was doing all, I was quite busy on Twitter then, I didn't really have Instagram and all there. But I've just, I noticed a, a fair few followers come on there and people taking pictures from the stands. Um, but then I'd notice when I'm going out to games and like you're going for a pie at half time or you're going for a piss or whatever, people coming over, hey, Josh, how's boxing going? I'd go home and tell my missus, but yeah, I got stopped again at half time, <laughs> yeah. you know. Someone asked me how was boxing going and that, you know. So at any moment there, I'd stop and I'd speak to them. And if they've gone, if they've gone to game with a few other folk, then I'd like, you know, be a bit cheeky. Ah, lads, why, why aren't you coming along with him? And yeah, you listen, you was on it. When, when's your next one, Josh? Ah, oh, this is when the next one is. Oh, let me get post up on my phone there. That's my next one. Fuck okay, it, we'll come along. We'll come along to the next one. And so, yeah. you know, if that one original who was a Leeds fan invited a few more, then... But also at this time, Leeds United wasn't doing too good. No. That's so what I was going to say. They, they didn't have much to but you yeah, and celebrate. About. Yeah, exactly. Mm. So a lot of them said it from, from the early days. You said like, like 2013, 14, when we were first having the arena shows. Like, Leeds were diabolical. You know, <laughs> they were honestly <laughs> diabolical. Back then. You know, we, Home and away. We, had, we had a lot of like, <laughs> well, go Josh was there. Yeah, yeah. Go <laughs> we're like a load of Italian players who just you know yeah. fucking didn't give a fuck we had a uh. you know Italian chairman we had oh, yeah, people the people from the just anyone and everyone were be, you know getting involved with club but it was fans were falling out with each other and you know protests going on outside the club so we're bad times but then I was trying to as well as Leeds Rhinos give it a bit of success. You're building the fan base, you're building the fan base and you start boxing on Sky. So if your first title fight on Sky, did you notice a difference once you was getting, did you get a TV slot that night? Or you must yeah, have I got for a TV title slot, fight yeah, so people first, would have seen. Yeah. And so grow off of that. The, the first, the, that was uh, fighting in all and uh, Tommy Coyle and Luke Campbell also boxed and it was meant to be the, the Tommy, um, Luke Campbell, Tommy Coyle, Samir Menemne, like the, Three golden boys of all who are gonna push Hull forward as a as a boxing uh, as a boxing city, um, but obviously I spot pie that night and, and um, a, a few of my mates' dads actually seen Eddie Earn that night and fucking said, listen, where are, where are you now? Where are you to take over? Blah blah. blah. And they made a right noise, you know, f um, <laughs> uh, in uh, the old Ice Arena. Like I, I stopped Samir in, in 12th round, and then uh, funny enough. Uh, Two weeks later, it was my birthday. My missus got me tickets to yours and Carl's fight. All right. And uh, <laughs> we, were, we were fucking, our tickets right next to the, the ring walk. I remember stood there and watching it back. Sky cameras collared us twice. Like, I'm oh, fucking, I'm on telly again. <laughs> twice in three weeks. <laughs> but uh, I remember looking around thinking, oh, okay, I'd love to fight. It's like, someone, I'd love to do something like this, uh, you know, one day, you know, at some point in my career. And, I, I come away from that that night not just because of the fight but the occasion everything else are just massively inspired like massively inspired and um, was that the first fight? yeah that was the first fight was yeah it, were you throwing piss at him then like <laughs> no I would I've, I've just uh, he wants his quid back I, I, I kind of <laughs> went I kind of went as a neutral we just you know one day for either one yeah but, it's, it, but it's a massive like it's, it's infectious feeling mm. like when there's a crowd like an electric crowd they were on sort of it happens loads of times with the big fights, but then it's different when it's if it's like your own people who have been on your journey yeah. and it's yeah. and it's building that. It feels that's yeah. different. That is a Josh Warrington crowd. That's not just yeah, casual yeah, yeah. sports fan. Yeah. That's literally on that scale. Though that many people bought tickets to see you, yeah. must have been unbelievable considering you sold four tickets once. Yeah, and yeah. you got all those thousands of people at Ellen Road. Yeah, like what? What was that? What was that feeling like? Oh, crazy. I mean, in that build up to that I personally sold just shot 4,000 tickets I mean some fucking football clubs don't sell yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean no, absolutely like, yeah and there's me and uh, my missus and the black books have gone now yeah. you know, <laughs> so who's taking care of your tickets yeah. at this point it well, surely can't so be I'd, I'd say when I started fighting on, on, on the sky shows it started to, everything happened really really fast and um, 
a couple of my pals started getting involved, a couple of old lads who, um, who used to work with you, who helped me out with like counting money and sorting out tickets, because they realised that actually, we used to joke about fucking, you know, going to Vegas and uh, winning world titles and that, but I I never really spoke like cocky. I thought, ah, like I, I was seeing the British title as the fucking, the, the numero uno. Like, Did you, yeah? Yeah, I thought that's like, that was my, that was my ceiling, George. So like, when you were telling people, this is where I'm at now. I, it might seem like I'm quite a distance from British title, but come with me on the journey for the British yeah, title. that's Whereas all I want to do. If you maybe said to them, we're going to go to Vegas one day at this point, they might have gone, yeah, all right, Josh. Yeah, yeah, so yeah I didn't yeah, know whether you were dreaming of goal. Vegas, yeah. but saying but British like, title. And then, and this is it. Listen, we're fucking definitely going to be next one. I'll make sure. I'm going to ask me pal and next. So they will bring more numbers for you next time, Josh. And I think they might have been asking why you know, I won't get in certain TV slots. And I might say, well, because I'm fucking, you know, I'm not, don't sell as many tickets. Oh, I ain't got me. Now we'll make sure we. You have got plenty behind you. We'll make sure you get plenty behind you in future. And it, like I say, even up until fighting at the arena for the first time, I have felt I knew more or less everyone there. Not directly, but might might know him through somebody. Oh, you know him, don't you? Oh yeah, nah, nice one. Like because you know him like that, then you shake the hand like, like you fucking know him yourself. So 2014, 15, 16, it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. I mean, one one time after that. I've, gone from fighting leisure centers for like 400 people there and, and then at least sound all and next minute it snowballed with help of the media and, and you know Eddie's fucking gab I've got 11,000 you know my ticket my personal ticket sales are through the roof so I'm getting some decent commission as well yeah um, it's so easy I throw a text about and texts are coming back Josh will have 30 mate Josh will have 50 Josh, you know what I mean it's fucking crazy I, 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 can't, I can't believe it. I can't believe how quickly it's come to this. And, you know, you, d you don't think it's ever going to change, but then, you know, one bad performance or whatever, and then it fucking, you see it dwindle up and down and up and down. Mm, that's an interesting point. So I remember Frank Buglione used to sell a load of tickets. And I remember him saying, you know, what happens with, with especially lads like that is they might have kids. They yeah. get a bit older. They yeah. don't want to go out anymore. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, all those people, the, the really reliable ones, just can't come anymore. Yeah. Did you see that? Or was yeah. it, yeah. Uh, bits and bats, bits and bats, like, I think a lot of people just quickly just jump on the next thing, probably even quicker these days. Mm. Um, so, I say, I'd gone from stoppage, 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 well, stoppage, stoppage, British titles, then another stoppage, then I went over to Berlin. That was quite a story, because I had an, I boxed on um, Paul Smith, I played with Rams on the card. Yeah, I was, in, I was out yeah, there. In, in Berlin, yeah. yeah, yeah, so I boxed on that. Just to, I just signed a contract for match room, just give me, Fucking little 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 tickle for an, an easy job, and uh, a lot of my mates, or big Leeds United fans, never had the chance to go follow Leeds United around Europe because we're too young. Yeah. <laughs> so that for them, it was their first taste of How the many day. About five hundred, I think it's still about oh. five hundred in eight rounder. That's unbelievable. But like, Incredible, yeah. they, they still talk about certain stories to this day. Fucking hell, do you remember when we went to Berlin? Yeah. Oh, okay. That coach and where that stands said, oh, you fucking what? Some of them didn't sleep. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You're creating experience. Yeah, yeah exactly. Like Mem memories, you know. Memories, and, and, yeah. um, imagine if you fucking got Vegas. Oh, Josh. Hey, listen, it can happen, can't it? Well, I hope so. I mean, I'm European champion, so I used to say, it can't. Like, at the time, like the golf was quite big, but believe yeah why not why not yeah fucking so right take us away take us away you're taking us around world josh blah blah, blah. so yeah we started to go and i'll say we had um we had uh the dennis spear on and i boxed he's filipino and um by this time talk sport like i'm making i'm making headline news in in the national press and um eddie's talking big things about me and it's a 120 or 109 jobby absolutely bash him up but I, could, I don't knock him out because after four rounds I'm trying so hard to entertain that he just goes into survival mode and there's a southpaw and he just keeps tagging me up and keeps clashing heads and after Paul Smith John and Nelson just absolutely slagged me like fucking no disrespect you know if Josh wants to go to the next level he needs to perform better than that you know should we really and truthfully should we be blasting guys out like that like you look at the difference in class. Lee Selby would have definitely blasted him out. And I felt that after yeah. on social media, like the neutrals who were starting to fucking see all the hype that I was getting, fucking just a feather fisted puncher. He's only there, he's only selling that arena because he's a fucking ticket seller. He's just a football fan. They're all casuals. 
That's one thing that used to annoy me. There's just casuals. Now, you realise how, how influential commentary yeah, is. Yeah. Massively, massively, because um, like, it annoyed me. I, I, I've personally felt hatred towards fucking Paul and Johnny at that moment in time. Like, yeah. you fucking bastard, you throw me on the bus and you don't realise the effect it's had. Because yeah. those neutrals are watching at home. They don't make their own opinion up. They listen to someone else and then they go off yeah. that and think they're the expertise then. Yeah. But then, so then the next one, I've gone from 11 and I boxed Joe Brunkner, which is a tough fight. And, you know, for, for box likes of Lee Selby. And instead of 11,000 being there, like 7,000, still great numbers, but yeah. it's a big drop. Yeah. You know, it's all right. Some people might say time of year because it was September instead of April, but I noticed it at that stage. I was, I was cementing me, me was cementing those who were loyal to me. And obviously the neutrals were coming and going. And, you know, it seemed to be on that way for a few years after that, um, up until getting Ellen Road, even like the Eliminators, like the Eliminator, in my eyes, the final Eliminator was fucking as big a fight as any, but I think uh, I think I only did like four, four to 5,000 for that mm. at the Leeds Arena. It's been like, oh, you know, you get into the stage where Josh is unbeaten, he's gonna beat this guy. Mm. He'll beat this guy and then then we'll go to Selborne. We're so, not gonna come yeah, to this one, Josh. We'll, yeah, go. Next we'll one. be at Selborne. Like, wait, yeah, guys, this, waiting for the big this one. Is, this they? is a fucking big one. Like, yeah. I need I need as much support as possible. Like, I need to make this a cauldron. Obviously, after that, we we did get the Selby one, and I think from there onwards, yeah, I've always had you know that solid base, and you know, obviously, we had Frampton after that, but. And the thing what really makes me pinch myself and I like I look I look back at all them comments in the past, you know, the the fucking casuals who just support me. Nah, you, you fucking your casuals are those who go to the fights now, like the the AJs and the Furies and don't know fuck all about boxing and go <laughs> I'm here I'm here like to take a picture for the selfie you know, to take a selfie for the their Instagram or the Twitter or whatever. Those who who were like a loyal core fan base is is like when I went to Edinley after fucking benching by Lara, you know, mm. we had eighteen thousand there to to see me get revenge. And not there, everyone was there with me. Like the Selby fight, there were eighteen thousand there to see me become Leeds' first male world champion. So you know, that in a that in a by accident, and they that ain't just filled with casuals. They those they're there like throwing every punch with me. Mm. But I think that's like come through a few things, obviously. People who like know me who spread word. That's kind of, that built throughout the year, and um, being accessible as well. You know, being someone who we can relate to. Yeah. You know, if you if you bloody walking down aisles in Tesco, and something just stopping and having two minutes with someone. You know, if they're like too scared to say hello, but so you make hey mate, you're like, right. I'm gonna say hello, but I'm fucking scared. Oh yeah, Josh, you're right. Yeah, shake your hand and just. Yeah, not so bad. How are you? You all right? Yeah, doing a bit of shopping. I say, yeah, like, you know, we've got that fish fingers. Oh, you dirty bastard. And then I'm laughing. You know what I mean? Just, just being normal. Shout out, fish Tell you what, yeah. it's, it's top lad, top lad. Yeah, and then they'll, they'll never then forget you, that. Then you get a message like that. Oh, cheers, mate. Cheers for sp spending time. Or you get some message off someone else. Oh, you've just bumped into my cousin in bloody Tesco. He's just being, he hasn't shut up speaking about meeting you and stuff like that. So just being accessible as, as well as they can kind of relate. You're one of them. They're yeah. one of you. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's yeah. those stories like reverberate through it. Yeah. It only takes someone to write it on Twitter, you know what I mean? And then strangers are seeing mm. it as well. The um one thing though, Josh, you can't you ain't got any fans to help you, and that's with your feature, George. Ah yeah. I think we should have a break and then we'll see yeah, we'll see if you can master George's feature. George, remind me again, how I become an elite club member. Well, get a GGBC cap. Done. What else? Well, you could wear the hoodie. Anything else? Well, have you got a water bottle? Anything else? You could get a print for the wall. It's cost me a fortune. Anything else? Well, this is what it takes to be elite, Deck. Does that mean I'm in the club now? Nearly. One last thing. Just hit the follow button in your podcast app. Welcome to the club, Deck. Oh, we'll have a push in the pool, mate. Right, we're straight in off the break. Big time. Uh, uh, should we go straight in with a feature? Big time. Right, Josh, so every week our guests are subject to a feature, which is always a quiz, mate. So I've come up with a boxing quiz for you. Okay. 
right so today's uv deck so right, what's the quiz what's it called <coughs> right first of all we, we knock about the quiz feature name and this one has been done before what's your ring walk track josh i predict a riot right my children's together. january i predict a diet is uh today's feature mate so i've got a series of questions <laughs> new, year, new us right and those uh familiar with the ggbc Every now and again, we do a word smash. Oh, is it word smash? So time? today oh, yes. it is a word smash, Josh. So I'm going to give you a question. Nervous. He's getting nervous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, oh, he's getting right. right. <laughs> so, I've never lost a word smash, Josh. <laughs> right. Okay. Right. So, 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 right. So I'm going to give you two questions with two answers, and you have to smash the answers together. So if I said to you, "Tell me a book," and you say "Lord of the Flies," and I said, "Tell me a boxer," and it was Isaac Lowe, the answer would be. Lord, Lord of the Flies at Low. Lord of the Flies at Low. Yeah. That makes right. sense. So you use the it, end yeah. of the first answer to, yeah. for the start of the second. So you smash right. it with the first. Right. Deck, do you want to go? Uh, Josh, do you want to go first or second? Or do you want Deck? Just go first. Deck, Deck, go first. Right. Here we go. Right. So also, is, is diet okay. meets yeah. boxer, right? right okay. Right. So right. first question is diet. Yeah. Kinda. First question is diet Kinda. meets Kinda. boxer. Right. So first one, Deck. Yeah. Right. It's a new age diet founded by Michaela Peterson. Jordan Peterson's daughter, right? Which consists of just beef, water, and salt, right? Yeah, I don't know that. Right, and Fuck. you smash it with the full name, including the alias of the OG baddest man on the planet. Iron Mike Tyson. Yeah. Oh, I don't know what that, but what the diet's called. Do you know what that diet's called? We just eat beef, water, and salt. Beef, water, and salt is- I might try is it. a new one. Yeah, can you give me a clue? It's part of the, it's part of the jungle or the animal kingdom, the, sa the savannah. Think of savannah and then think of iron. Lion. Yeah. Lion Mike Tyson. Yeah, <laughs> it's the lion diet. It's the lion diet. So it's lion. I'll tell you who wouldn't like that, Frank Warren. He wouldn't have lion smashed with iron. <laughs> it doesn't work like <laughs> It that, doesn't no. work at all. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think right. so. Lion yeah. Mike Tyson. I'm not sure of it. Right. I have got a degree as well. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. You might be familiar with some diets, just I'm not sure, right? So the next one, right? It's a diet that consists of what people believed we ate 10,000 years ago. So you gotta eat like oh, our good. ancestors, okay. right? Yeah. With a Mexican fighter who has a win and loss against Irishman, Carl Frampton. Carnivore Santa Cruz. It's not, it's not carnivore. Cause it's, uh, it, it'll, it's, the word finishes with Leo Santa Cruz. So it's. I know it. Do you know what the first one is? What the diet is? Can I nick this point? Go on. Go on in. Paleo Santa Cruz. Yeah. <laughs> Paleo diet. <laughs> Paleo That's 2 diet. Nil. Come on. Okay. A diet which includes going for long durations. Yeah, got it. Of time without food with uh, when, the great, when the greatest, when he wasn't floating like a butterfly, he was... Intermittent fasting like a bee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, can I throw a towel in? <laughs> intermittent <laughs> fasting, like, yeah, yeah. intermittent <laughs> fasting, like a. But you'll get this one. That's up there with Lord of the Flies. You'll get this one. You'll get this one. Like, yeah, yeah you'll get this one. Right here we go. Right, this diet consists of low carbs, high fat diet, which shares similarities with Atkins. With oh, I thought it was Atkins. I it was no, Atkins. Wait, it's not Atkins. It's a bit more modern, right? Uh, it puts the body in a metabolic state, right? With former cruiserweight world champion, who's also a celebrity in a jungle. I got it. I got it. <laughs> Go on, Dave, just fucking take it. Go on, put it on my mizzle. I'll, I'll tell you what the diet is. Keto. Keto, Keto Bombabellu. No, Keto Tonabellu. Yeah. Say it again. Keto Tonabellu. <laughs> Key Tony Bell, you yes. Yeah, so we got it. Let's smash it together. Yeah, yeah. Here Keith we go, right. Deck, a diet uh, of dense food yeah. that is less energy, uh, yeah, less energy dense, resulting in you feeling fuller for lesser calories with the Philadelphia Executioner. Bernard Hopkins. I don't know what the dense food diet is. No chance. Yeah, it's quite. It's not even. Is but, it a diet? Did you just Google types of diet? You'll get this one, Josh. Right. Right. Okay. No. This. So this I'm is easy, right. Like, so right. A things. diet consisting of no meat. Right. Yeah. With former A star referee of the British Boxing Board of Control, who is now an official for Bieber. 
I got, oh, that's I very I good. I don't know if it's gone. Right, what, what, what's your he diet if you don't eat meat? He reft you. Vegan John Lewis? It's not vegan. Oh, you just don't eat meat. Vegetarian John Lewis? Veg yeah, <laughs> Vegetarian John Lewis, yeah. Uh, the referee. Well, he and John Lewis, Lewis. yep, yeah, right. That was the best one, yeah. Plant based. That's but no, don't, don't give him no credit for that. That's <laughs> fucking shocking. Right, here we go. Yeah, he's a gambling you let this go. Yeah, man. <laughs> Jesus. <Yeah>. Viewers! <laughs> Viewers! Yeah. Surely you skip past this, his bit. This is highbrow stuff. To jump in. Yeah, it's highbrow stuff. This is not this podcast without this sort of uh, feature at the start of the year. George, is this, is this you're doing? Yeah. This is my it's quiz, yeah. He's even put it on his iPad. This is the first time we've seen his iPad. I predict a diet. I predict yeah. a diet. This is revolutionary. Right, plant-based diet. Yeah, vegan. Uh, light heavyweight Londoner. Vegan. Win and loss to Anthony. Uh, win and loss to. Uh, vegan to the yard. Yeah, fucked it. Vegan to the yard. Yeah, vegan and. Yeah, it's poor. That's poor. Yeah. Yeah, that's a struggle, yeah. Right, <laughs> last, last one. one. Thank, last thank one. That. This is. This last is, one, Josh. Right, next goal wins. It's even. Yeah, next goal wins. Is it? Right. <laughs> a diet consisting of eating unprocessed whole plant based foods with the first man to beat Vasil Lomachenko as a pro. Sick. Who beat Vasil yes, Lomachenko in his second the fight? Mexican guy, um, what's his name? Um, <laughs> what's a diet consisting of unprocessed whole foods? Plant based. Organic. Organic? It doesn't, I don't think it needs to be organic. No, no idea. What's the diet? Rolando Salido. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Rolando Salido. And oh, Raw. Is that, I thought you like that. Is that, my, is that my taxi? I'm going home. No, yeah. No, before we let you go, Josh, we need to talk about now. We need to talk about now. Now, 2023, <laughs> that what, well, how would you reflect on 2023? Fucking dog shite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say, uh, I, I, I play guitar a bit and fucking one song I keep going to, Where Is My Mind by Pixies. Love that song. Yeah. Fucking the end honestly. of Fight Club. End of Fight Club, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That one's a, uh, I, sing, I sing that quite uh, quite passionately. Oh man, I, mean, I can't fucking sing, but I sing it quite passionately and <laughs> playing because it's been a frustrating year. Obviously, um, you know, I think up since the post lockdown period, my career has not been as glamorous or as, as, as exciting as, as I'd like it to have done. So, obviously, a year or so out, you know, behind closed doors, get chinned by Lara, have rematch with Lara, ends in a you know, technical draw, come back, uh, absolutely destroy Kiko Martinez, become a two time world champion, but break my jaw in the process. I've more or less the, the year out come back in against um, uh, Luis Alberto Lopez. Um, absolutely shocking for the first half a dozen rounds and then take over the, the rest of the fight. Thought I'm doing enough. And, um, you know, everyone thinks I'm finished thanks to the way that I've started the fight. Um, you know, fucking know where I've gone wrong. Start January of, of this year, right, fucking I'll sort yourself out now, get back in the gym. Start, you know, feeling sorry for myself, but get get back in there. Got a new lease of life. Got a new fucking bit of energy about me. Goes down to Nottingham. Watch Wooden Lara. Lara knocks Wood out. Gets out. Speaks to me. Then I'm fucking. I'm told by the matchroom team that I'm next, and I'll be fucking, you know, get yourself in training. So again, I've got even more fucking fuel to fire. Can't just spat me, you know. We then we're going for a trilogy now. We know. Um, so I'm, I'm edge on that training, training, training. Um, I'm kind of like I'm just at home, but I'm so focused that I'm not even paying attention to my kids and my missus. I'm just fucking focused. Like phone will go any second. I'm telling her phone will go any second, and she she's heard this many times before. But I'm not having it. I they, they, they keep telling me just what enough to keep me fucking, you know, me me training hard. You know you. Next week we're gonna sort it, Josh. Next week we're gonna sort it. Next week we're gonna sort it. He gets to fucking mid-April time and tell me that um, I'm not gonna be next because Lee's taking the rematch. So, uh, but but we're gonna get you something else in June. So I'm kind of fucking going a bit of downward spiral for a week or so. Then June starts getting talked about. Opponents start getting mentioned. Then all of a sudden, fucking hell, we're going, we're taking to a, we're taking you to Vegas. We're taking you to Vegas for a, a shot against Ray Vargas. WBC, all of a sudden, fucking hell, when's this? September, 
if you told me that at the start of the year, then I'd just fucking put my feet up and I wouldn't have been blowing your phone up. Or, you know, bang on, get in there. Oh, I don't know how am I going to take keep this fucking secret. This is all, all we wanted since I've won a world title to go to America to tick that box to say I've done it. Mm. You know, I've seen like Rick and Joe Calzaghe go up there and fucking I'm going to do it myself. It goes on for another month or so. Yeah, in that meantime, Lada would have the rematch, would beat Slada. Okay, now, am I admiring someone? What's going to happen here? Josh looks like you're uh, you're going to be fighting Wood. When? O October time, I reckon, October, November. So what about the America fight? Oh, it's not, I don't think that's going to happen now. It's not going to mm. happen. Negotiations have broke down. And that's it. So then, fucking obviously, you know, I have a few weeks off of training, get myself on holiday, just to fucking recharge upstairs, come back, fucking back in the gym, train like a bastard. You know, have the fight with Lee, and then, uh, you know, what happens, happens. And um, and since that, I've heard we're having the rematch, and been told again that it's, okay, it's going to be at some point later this year, May time, but still nothing's confirmed. Mm. What, do you, what do you want? I want the rematch. Yeah. I'd love to, I'd love to I'd put, that, put that to bed. Um, I feel that... I, what, what happened in that fight was going the way that I, I thought so so going in, but going into the fucking wood fight I knew that my head on it my boxing ability and everything else would be too much for Lee be far too much for him until that seventh round where fucking I get points taken off for hitting him in my back of head even though he's still in front of me I get points taken off for there and uh, Michael Alexander says to me any more of that I'm disqualify you so I think that fucking hell, he, he's just gone from the first warning to a point off without giving me a final warning, put my foot on the gas, put my foot on the gas and even said the last 10 seconds, you were, I'm not sure you've been the same, George, so you win the last fucking 10 seconds, if you, you know, make it stand out, win the last 10 seconds, just sit with judges, mm. go diving in, lead time with a brilliant shot, fucking goes down, um, at some point getting up or whatever, I hear the bell, my head back to the corner, fucking unsteady legs. But like we see the, on the weekend with a with a featherweight WBO contest, mm. both went down and fucking unsaid legs. But allowed to continue. But that fight's that fight's waved off. Um and since that, I had Lee's come out, said a few interviews, um, said that I've shown no respect. But um I think it works both ways, George. Do you know what I mean? Like he's done no but gloat and be arrogant. You know, mm. we, me and him in a medical room after the fight, he comes in. Because I, I caught him in the third with a punch. He comes in. Fucking hell, you hurt me about four or five times. I like, fucking know. I could hear you wincing. I was like, ah, fair play, mate. Shook hands and stuff like that. And I wanted to go have a chat with him after, but I never got the opportunity to because I had to test and all that. Mm. Um, and then since that, it's like, oh, fucking, you know, he ain't showing me no respect. To, oh, you know, he's just making excuses. But apparently on the next day, he's on talk sport saying that, oh, it's all part of the game plan. You know, Josh, Josh always gets a bit sloppy towards second half of a fight. So what you meant to get fucking chinned for seven rounds and then you were meant to, you know, pull a punch out of the bag and, you know, do it like that. Yeah. So um, I'd like to, I'd like to, you know, pull that to bed. I mean, this is getting fucking bigger now, George. You know, it used <laughs> to be just, just to be Lara, then the fucking Lara now Lopez and now would as well. Yeah. But I don't like to What happened at the end of the fight, Josh? Like, because obviously you go back to your corner. What was you, can you remember what you were thinking? Like, I mean, because the referee, like, um, obviously you turned away and the referee stops it but I've never had a chance to talk to you about it because the bell's gone like, yeah, yeah, so yeah. you're like it, are you just thinking the bell's gone I'm just going to sit down on my stool yeah, it's the end of the round or, like, or are you or are you <clears throat> not like, it's like uh, subconscious instincts really Yeah. so I knew it would let a stage it round because like I say that's why I've heard the klaxon I've heard the 10 second klaxon so that's why I've gone diving in um, I remember the punch that buzzed me but I don't remember the punches after Yeah. like Obviously, when you watch your back, I fucking as I, I want to throw. I in my head, I remember what we're gonna throw. We're gonna throw a right hand to the body, come upstairs, left hook, and I've gone to throw a right hand, but as I've turned into punch, I've dropped my left hand. Yeah, like fucking stupid. But as I've turned, dropped my left hand, I've full impact's gone into him. So he startled me there, and as he's buzzed me, I remember being buzzed, going to put my hands up, and then fucking taking five cleans on the next minute, I'm on the deck. Yeah, I don't remember them punches what put me on the deck. But instead of just sitting on one knee, I feel good enough, fucking hell, like a bit of a shock, get myself up and trying to explain to people what it's like when you've been put on your backside is like 
you're going to be an unsteady leg. It's like you've been on shit. You've, you're on the toilet for a long time and you've been scrolling through your phone and you've got your hands like that. Yeah. <laughs> and then you get up after, after you wiped your ass and you've got pins and needles. Like, oh. That's what it was like. I got up like that. But because I've heard the bell like at some point, like I said, I've, I thought, well, initially I said after, I thought I'd heard it when I was, get, as I was up, but it, would, it rang when I went floor. Mm. And it wasn't just a ding ding with a fucking brrrrrrrrrr. So I've heard the bell. In Simple, I've gone back to the corner. I see me, old fella, getting up on the on the side so I look at him he's about to get in ring and like on eight they want to they want to show you they want you to show that you're alright so yeah. I can hear six seven eight on eight I turn round and on, as, as I turn round he's already waving and it's like yeah. Michael what are you doing he went Josh you know you haven't turned round like you ain't even cooking you Lee like five he's already running to send a ring to fucking to celebrate yeah. it's like he must think it's done, but I'm like, I, I actually say, for fuck's sake, because I know my old fella's going to go, you stupid bastard, you, yeah. you drop your left well, hand we, and we worked on that, but... We, we debated it, didn't we? Yeah, like, yeah. Is it an eight count or a ten count, you yeah. know? Because almost you've got to be show yourself fine by mm. eight, and you're really, safe. it's a ten count. Yeah, so you're you turn safe, around so at there's, eight. There's no reason for him to be stopping that fight other the, the, than the ten. The thing you're is, not, is, you're is not in danger, I'm in my own corner, I'm not the other side of the ring, so I'm not going to, it's not like I'm losing ten seconds walking across the ring yeah. on dead legs. I'm there, in the corner. He's a judge as well as a referee. Yeah. So he'll see when he's picking the scorecards up. He'll have an idea. I've hardly taken a punch or fight. I mean, you've seen it on the day, the next day. Lee's still fucking look like, looking like Kung Fu Panda with black eyes. I ain't got a mark on my face. You know, I've hardly taken a punch throughout the fight. Mm. He's been hurt numerous times throughout. It's a championship fight. Not just a championship fight, it's world boxing. You know, he must see how, the, how I'm doing on the scorecards as well. It's like... I've got a minute, give me that opportunity. If I get up the next round and it blasts me out straight away, then I'm no argument. And we're not yeah. sat here discussing it. I say, fucking hell, you know, fair play to Lee. What it does set up though, is this massive rematch. Um, and they're talking about the city ground. Yes. So you're going to be the away guy now at the football ground. <laughs> yeah. Um, going to someone else's backyard, like Lee Selby did. Mm. I've got a feeling you'll probably take a few, a few more fans than Lee Selby did to Ellen Road. Yeah. Is that a big away day for... Yeah. For all those all those years of cultivating that fan base to come down to Nottingham and, and support you in the rematch. Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. And um, like I, like we spoke about earlier about the you know the, the they're not just you know ticket buyers and I've, I've never really just seen them as that. Like a lot of them are fucking good friends and, and family and they've, they've, it's like I've become one of their own. You know, like you have passionate football fans, you have passionate you know rugby fans, you have passionate sports fans, sports fans in general, and I've feel I've got a good um, click with, with some of these guys and uh, and I think that they'd want to see me get revenge so they'd be they'd be following the numbers and plus it's a good away day yeah. I mean, no, no one's like a, no one's a shit all but um, it's shout out Nottingham yeah shout yeah. out what, what are you <laughs> living for right now Josh in terms of your, your boxing career are you fighting for yourself are you fighting for the fans are you just fighting because you love it and you know nothing else like you've you've almost ticked every box, you know. You've started out um, right at the beginning, you know, selling door to door tickets. You've been to the to the top, and you had to come back from defeat. Um, and you're hoping now for this rematch to come back from defeat again. But what what motivates you? Like what what gets you in the gym? S scared of retirement, and I love the sport. Simple as that. So the two things I'm petrifies me does retirement, like because it's all I've done. My life's been centered around boxing. Like, you know, it's, I wouldn't have become a dental technician if I wasn't a boxer. Like, I fell into that job because it works on my boxing and the gaffer was flexible with me. Um, and I could make my own gun shields. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, everything that's been about boxing, like, to HIM now for it's free. Um, but I understand that it does come to an end eventually and you have to get out before sport retires you. Um, but I, I still feel like I've can still got some of there. You know, I'm, I'm going to the gym, I, I train and and I spar, and I feel like, the hell, I'm strong and as fit as and as wise as as I, as I ever have been. Um, and obviously, from outside, people will say, "Oh, well, this and another," but because you know, in my last performance, I'm, I, people have still been coming up to me and saying, "I haven't seen your box like that since 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 Frampton. Fucking unbelievable!" Until what happened happened. Um, I'd be disappointed as well if I didn't get the opportunity to go to America. Like, 
you know, thinking about it, I mean, even as you introduced me, it would have been nice if you'd have been saying three-time world champion. But, you know, when I look back at it as a whole, I was fucking, would have been happy just to win the British title. So I've gone well beyond my dreams, achieved mm. a lot more. Um, but I feel that I've been a world champion again or fighting in America, I'd probably take the latter. I'd love to fight in America just to uh, tick that box. And is that, is that for you or the fans? Both. Yeah. Both. I, I want it to be like, you know, I don't know, you don't always get fucking fairy tale endings, but um, maybe as a look back, especially those who followed me, you know, from the from the leisure centre, those who were jumping on when it first started to take on. So um, yeah, I'd like to I'd like to do that just for them and probably um, have a piss up with them and like get arrested. There you and go. Then, okay, <laughs> don't don't get arrested. <laughs> we'll be there. GGBC yeah. road trip. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. we, need, Absolutely. Uh, we need one more thing, George. I think we know the answer to this, but let's see. Well, yeah. So we asked every one of our guests to give us a, a ring walk track to add to our playlist on Spotify. So, Josh, it can be uh, a track that you've always ring walked to, or it could be anything you want. It could be the Pixies. Oh, I don't know. Pixie, I don't know, I don't Pixie, know, Pixie, know if that's on there quite. If and is is I predict to write already no, on there? Definitely not. No, right. it's not. Well, it has to be. Then, it has to be. It has to be. I predict yeah. to write it. So when they hear it in the gym, can I can I ask George where where does the Spitfire came from? Uh, I liked I liked I liked the track I liked the prodigy um, ideally I wanted something that people were a little bit more familiar with and that they could sing along to but it's not um, singing along no but because it was like I was sort of being billed as like quintessential English like uh, a Saint you know Saint George and then it's got Spitfire in the title yeah I think the first time I'd heard it was Joe Calzaghe came out to it but he always came out to a different track yeah um, I just thought it was cool I liked the drop um, and then I thought it was like an intense, but your ones like everyone knows the words, the whole crowd's mm. up and up and jiving. Like I gotta be honest, I'm jealous of that because that would be cool, um, as well as this banging tune. Yeah, yeah. but Spitfire was more like lasered in. And they're from yeah. Leeds, aren't they? Right, Kaiser yeah, 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 yeah. That's perfect addition. Perfect. And what a way to start the new year. Absolutely, big Josh. year for you, Josh. Come and see it unfold. Yeah, yeah. Thank thanks you. so much for coming on the show, mate, and and sharing your stories. Loads of young pros now are listening yeah, to this and being like, to. "This is how you build a fan base yeah. like Josh Warrington." Uh, it takes a lot of a lot of work, yeah. and also you've got to be a good fucking fighter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nice one, Josh. Thanks for having me, guys. Cheers, mate.